Righto. Well, Croft, we're a little bit spoilt today. Very spoiled. Because what a great way to kick off our first ever Fat Side podcast. Great way to start the year. We've got a very special guest in the studio. None other than AFL journalist, revered AFL journalist, mm-hmm. Mike Sheen. Mike, welcome to Open Mic. Thanks, boys. <laughs> <laughs> this, <laughs> it's a reversal of roles, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, revered. Uh, well, revered. Yeah. By whom? What, what did you want? No, no, I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Oh, I think there's a few people would dissent from that view, but <laughs> yeah. the, the, the have I put a bit of honey on the tip? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I've used it. No, I, I'm. Um, uh, it's nice to be with you. I, I actually do genuinely mm. like talking to younger guys about who are making their way in this business. Oh, that's good because uh, we've all we're not making our way. By the way, yeah. <laughs> you're not. <laughs> nah, no. we're amateurs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. One we're, step at a time. As far as you're aspiring, is it? <laughs> no, no, we're we're aspiring. We're, yeah. we're 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 shooting for the stars. But okay, no, he's, taking, got a, yeah, he's got, taking the piss a little bit. I think we've yeah. got a long way to go, Croft. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good start having you in, Mike. Well, yeah. thank you, boys. Thank you. Nice to be here. I appreciate it. Now, um, the first thing we need to ask... Yes. We don't want to take the piss too much. We want to ask you some very hard-hitting questions, but it's an interesting time... I'll be time. the judge of that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You are the professional. Yes. Uh, we are the amateurs, mm. but... One no, I didn't mean it like that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> don't worry. We've got I'll decide whether they're hard or not. We, we've learned. We've got thick skin. Yes. <laughs> when, we're new media. Yeah. We're not your traditional journos, yes. but um, coronavirus... It'd yeah. be remiss of us. Mm. That's always a classic journalistic yes. line. Yeah. We have to talk about it, Mike. Now, at the time of recording, it's 2.01pm on a Tuesday. Now, Gil McLaughlin mm. last night, he came out, he's reduced it by five games to a 17-game season. Mm. We still don't know. At the end of today, we might not have an AFL season. No. I think we will. Yeah? But I, but I, I don't know either. But my guess is that we, uh, the football will start on Thursday night on schedule. Okay. It's like... I just it just feels so strange that all these other leagues around the world yep. and all these sports around the world have just gone up. Nah, we need to stop now. Yep. We'll revisit later. Yet here in Australia, the AFL, NRL, and even the A League are like, oh no, we'll keep going. I find it weird that in this country Why? we're doing it different. Why? What, 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 but who says that the overseas lead is the is uh, the right way to go? That's what true. I mean, if, you, if if you've got a group of people, if if I'm Gillan McLaughlin. Mm. And my players tell me, A, they want to play, and the medical people say, B, they are fit to play. Mm. Why wouldn't they play? I guess it's just the, the risk, the risk of the, the spread risk of, of what? spreading this disease. Well, that so they're uh, safer in Fed Square or on the tram and train, are they? Well, I'm, uh, knowing AFL players, they don't catch no, many trams. <laughs> they don't go to Fed Square. <laughs> no, that's true. They're that's sitting true. in a South Yarra yeah. apartment somewhere, I'd Uber, say. Uber, yeah. Uber blacks good on point. the way. Yeah, good point, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but they do, they are in the real world when they need to go and yes. get a paper or yes. uh, some petrol or... Mm. The Herald Sun. Yeah. The Herald Sun. To read your top 50. No, you know I haven't done that for nine years. I know. Some bozo called... Robinson's picked yeah. it up. Oh, we're we're, we're going to discuss his top top fifty a bit M- later, Mike. We're going to talk about that later. <laughs> okay. We're really disappointed with his top ten choices. Yeah. Are you really? Yeah, I don't like him, but we'll ask you. We'll ask you soon. Okay. But um, yeah, the coronavirus thing. It's it's very odd because what I've read and and let's just make sure we all put it on the record. None mm. of us are medical experts in I this am. room. I am. No. But <laughs> I don't – this is the thing that scares me. And I've, I've got a, a, a newly wedded wife at home mm-hmm. who, is, who is panicking. She's been sent home from work. She's in isolation. She doesn't want to leave the house because one thing that scares us is the stealth nature of this virus. Yep. Any one of us could be carrying it right now. You, mm. you guys are safe. Yeah, you know, I mean, oh, that's that, that, that melts uh, me. No, 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 I feel I'm good not, now. <laughs> I'm not being the amateur doctor, but the least vulnerable group in the community – Mm. Are blokes who are in their twenties, early thirties, uh, and fit. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. No, maybe not so. <laughs> I go to the gym. I go to the gym quite we're regularly. Half, we're but, half fit. But if we're, if we're looking at AFL players who are the fittest people, basically going yes. around, I don't think it's them we're concerned about. It's the people who are around them in their lives. A lot of these guys have got young families. They've got new f- new new babies. Sure. If yep. you're if you're a player going out there at the possibility that you could pick it up off someone else and bring it back home. I think that's the worry. It's yeah. not the actual AFL players themselves. It's the people around them, and it's just more ways of spreading it, essentially. Yeah. Well, look, only the medicos know. Well, no, they don't even know that. But yeah. the guess is that the less contact you have with yeah. other people, yeah. the less likely you are to get it. I that's understand true. that. Mm. But I still – I like the idea. I think, I think we need something to distract us from mm. – 
uh, from the virus and how we're all going to be eaten up and, the, and that the world's closing down. I don't, I don't see it. I w- I'm looking forward to watching Thursday night. Oh, I, I, I'm, uh, and, and I'll tell you what, the ratings will say that we have craved this. Mm. We want it. Yeah. Opening round, it'll be, it'll be eerie with no one, no one there. It but will be strange. It will be. But, but the players have said they want to play. Yeah. Mm. Um, so until, I mean, until a player God gets, will. until a player, when a player gets it, it'll yeah. stop. But until then, yes. Well, Pendles is clear. Yeah, he's they clear. announced that yeah. he's clear. So there's no one of the of the AFL player group, not yet, that is um, confirmed with the virus, yet. right? Yet. Not not yet. But that's the thing. There are so many different moving parts. This is agile. It's changing all the time. But the one greatest tweet that I've seen during the coronavirus is mm. Liam Gallagher on Saturday night. A friend came up to me and he said, "Check this out," and he just wrote, "Drink through it." Simple. <laughs> Drink through it. I've stopped yeah. up. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully that's, alcohol can uh, prevent the virus. That's the solution of all young people. Just, yeah, yeah. Just, just drink through it. Do you like a? What do you like? Do you like a scotch? Do you? No, I'm a red man. Red, red man. Red. Yeah. A, what Lovely. a Shiraz a cap. Shiraz. Yeah. Shiraz. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Come on, good. do a shout out for your, your favorite Shiraz. <laughs> Uh, as long as it's red, as long as it's red, <laughs> it's open in front and of me. A minimum twenty bucks a bottle. I'm happy. There we go. Oh, dear. Yeah. I was going to say Audi red. Probably yeah. not. Maybe no, not. No, Mike's no. a bit better. Than that. Now yeah. we're gonna we're gonna go back in time a little bit. We've done our current day matters. Yeah, we're done. Now, Mike, as we mentioned, you're a video journalist. You've interviewed pretty much everyone in the game. Where did it begin? Can you remember your first interview with a player, a coach, your very yep. first time where young, young Mike rolled up with the cassette tape? What happened? My memory's not great, but I do re- vividly remember this because, you know, like you guys, mm. when you do the first one, yeah. I was working at a place called Newsday. It was an afternoon paper that The Age created in 1969. Okay. And... Greg Hobbs, the uh, revered and legendary <laughs> former um, Sun and Herald football writer. You don't even know who he is. I don't. I'm, I'm not Why were you laughing? I'm being polite. Because so, I use the same adjectives you used about me. <laughs> um, so, so Greg was having a day off and I'd been working at this place for about a week. Yep. And he said, uh, he said, uh, ring Sam Kekovic. Oh, uh, Sam. Uh, I said, what? He said, here's his number. He's in hospital. He's just had a knee done. Oh, right? no. Ring him up and you can get a story. That'll, uh, that'll hold because he's promised it to us. And I, I, it was, I couldn't, could barely dial mm. the number to the hospital. I was <laughs> in such awe of actually a conversation with this bloke called Sam Kekovich, oh, no. who I now know really well. I know hopefully I didn't call him Mr. Kekovich, but he was in bed having the knee done. And I said, Sam... It's Mike Sheen here from Newsday. Uh, <laughs> you yes, didn't son. say it like that, yeah, did you? <laughs> probably not that loud, actually. Yeah. Hey, anyway, so we had this conversation and I got a story of sorts. Yeah. was never going to win the Walkley, but yeah. I got some quotes from him. But I, I, I think I probably put it off for an hour. Yeah. yeah so, oh, look, I'll just get a glass of water first. And, um, <laughs> look, I'll say something to that person over there. And, oh, you know those things when you say, I yeah. know I've got to do this and I want to do it, but just mustering the, can't the courage it. to do it. Now, Rob, so I did, but, if it, but if it had have been, say, <laughs> Mick Malthouse or yeah. um, uh, Alistair Clarkson, yeah. I might never have become a journalist. Exactly. I, I would have been so scared of the reaction. You wouldn't have a chance. <laughs> no, you were lucky because you got Sam Kegovich in a docile environment yeah. when he'd just done his knee. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's a pretty intimidating character. There would have been a lot yeah. of morphine running through his body at the time. He would have been happy to talk to well, anybody. Well, he was, and he, look, one of his... <laughs> Um, great traits is his willingness to talk to anyone and be enthusiastic about what he's doing. So, yeah. it was a good one to start with. Okay, that's a okay. very that's a very, but I mean, I, very I good still one. even at um, in recent years, I still have the, footballers have an aura that um, still works on me. Yeah, yeah. And I remember, can I? We got time to tell this story. Yeah, yeah. Tell, I was go nuts. We're my, here all day, aren't my, we? Aren't, my we daughter, in, aren't we in lockdown? <laughs> yeah, this is the quarantine my, lockdown. My daughter was playing. Um, Football for Collingwood. Kate Sheehan playing yep. football for Collingwood. Had a car pass at uh, near the Glass House mm-hmm. where they play. And uh, she picked me up. I'd played tennis. So I'm in her car and we're backing out. And she goes, there goes Christian Petraka. And being a Melbourne supporter. Yes, And like at that man. time, I have to admit to a crush on this kid of 20 years of age. Because <laughs> he's good looking. Uh, track. No, just because the way... He, he, he can play because yeah. he's good and, looking, and the, <laughs> and the way, I, and he's got a bit of Italian about him. Yeah. So, so I put down the window. I said, "Hey," I thought, "Who said that?" And it was me, right? Anyway, so he comes over to the car, and I had all the poly. I'm 
Well, I would have been <laughs> se- nearly 70, right? Yeah. And he's 20. And he ate butterflies in his stomach. I'm saying, oh, sorry, Hi, Christian. Christian. I'm Mike Sheehan. And I just wanted to say, oh, <laughs> I thought, what a goon I am. <laughs> and he sort of looked at me and says, yeah, hi. And he walked off and I felt... What a dick. See, see oh. Mike, there was a role reversal this morning. That was Rob yeah. upstairs. Yeah. He had butterflies. Thanks, Rob. You, yeah, that was me going, oh, Mike's coming. Didn't you I'm have gonna... morning six? Yeah. Sickness? You had a little vomit. <laughs> no, morning no, six. not quite, not quite. Uh, not anyway, quite. so that's a true story. <laughs> wow. So you started with Kekovic and then still 50 years on, <laughs> I'm still stumbling over saying hello to Christian Petraka. That's so good. Well, that's so good. I- if we do get an AFL season away, he's going to have an absolute belter. Yes, he will. Yeah. He, he'll be very good. You know our luck this year? Mm. Mm. We'll play six or eight rounds and be unbeaten on top of the ladder, and then they'll call it off. <laughs> of course, <laughs> and say not enough games to have a, a premiership. Or, or it'll yeah. be like Rob's beloved Essendon. Yeah, they might get. Are they still in the comp? Yeah, we'll still be here. <laughs> we'll still. Be, yeah. Are they still in the comp? <laughs> we'll still. No, see, Whoa. I'm. 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 The reason I'm Oof. wanting the delay. The secret <laughs> thing is, we have a massive injury list, Mike. If delay, <laughs> delay, injury, delay yeah. for six months. God, let's wait till matter. everyone's back, and then we'll be we'll be good and gone then. Well. Dustin Fletcher's old oh man was the last bloke to play a final for Eston, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Just well, how long since you've won a final? 2004 against Melbourne, actually. Mm, there you go. 2004. Oh. When did you last win a flag? Uh, uh, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah. we, we don't talk about that. Um, Mike, I've got one for you. Coaches. Coaches can be very difficult with the media. Mm. You mentioned Mike, you into Mick Malthouse before. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and Clark. Yes. So, so we, we want you to... Basically, just give us a score out of one to five for coaches, with one being extremely difficult to deal with, with yep. five being I- incredibly great to deal with, very mm. open with their, their yep. words to you. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna throw out a few names. So just remember the one, yeah, I got it. The yep. ones for the prickly bastards and the fives for the one, nice ones bastards. for Mickey M. Yeah, yep. yeah. Well, Mick Moldhouse, we'll go to him first. One. Yep. Okay. One. And, and and Mick. Oddly enough, Mick and I started as buddies. I knew him when he was playing for Richmond. Uh, Not on speed dial anymore? No. 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 <laughs> well, he wouldn't pick it up. Um, and then, without being immodest, I had a role in his appointment uh, to his first coaching job at the Bulldogs. But then things went awry when he went to Perth. Gotcha. And I think, he's, I think he decided then, he said, I'm in Perth, I'm coaching the West Coast. It's us against the rest of them, and I don't care about the rest of Australia or any any inhabitants thereof. So um, I fell out with Mick, mm. uh, and rightfully you've given him a one. He's guessed yeah. a one. <laughs> yeah, uh, Kevin Sheedy, uh, five. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. That's the best. Colourful. So you're yeah. saying at no point was Kevin Sheedy ever prickly with you? Uh, no, I didn't say that. He was I just am. good to do it. You said I said that. <laughs> yeah. No, but on balance. So Kevin uh, was great. Yeah. I mean, great for the game. Mm. Almost exclusively great to deal with. True. Uh, genuine football lover, creative mind, yeah. uh, and not a grudge holder. That's my assessment of That's Sheedy. good. I like that. Love it. Very, very good. What about Alistair Clarkson? Um, yeah, again, I, I was matey with Clarko. We had a falling out, which was my fault. I was at, at fault. Uh, what was that about? Uh, I said on Talking Footy mm-hmm. uh, on the Monday of Grand Final Week when the Hawks were involved that uh, was that our way? Yeah, I think so. Okay. It wasn't that many. I can't remember. Anyway, I said that um, he could, would, probably would be coaching West Coast the following year. Oh wow! Okay. Um, and, and and he was right. He said that I didn't have the courtesy to ring him on such a big story in such a sensitive time, and he was right. Yeah. Did he call you, or was that a physical discussion? That was, that was a physical discussion when he came into um, on the couch after winning the flag. Gotcha. Oh, yeah. Which was the so it was a yeah, bit of a stuff the tradition. You, yeah. Stuff you, Mike. Oh, yeah. I've got the yeah. cup. Yeah. There you go. yeah. Well, it was even without the cup, he would have been. And he's he's angry, Clarko. Yeah. He can get angry. But I, I take um, that was my fault. So I wear that. Okay. Uh, a coach from the mid-2000s, Mark Choco Williams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good response. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon yes. everyone... What does uh, that mean? I like Choco, but... Um, what are we giving him? Score? But for, uh, give him... Uh, In the middle? I'll give him three. Yeah, three. Yeah. yeah. 
I've like he's got he's got a good highlights reel. If you go on his YouTube press conferences, yeah. he's got good highlights. But I feel like with Port were playing bad, he would have been pretty prickly. Yeah, and he's look, he's he's obtuse. You know, he just sometimes he's just, he won't come on uh, to, uh, on the couch no. because he says I get paid, me MS mm. gets paid. Mm. Why doesn't MW get paid? I said, well, um, and I point. do have a good line on, on uh, for this. Now I've, I've learnt this. I said, well, the greatest player that ever played, in most people's opinion, is Lee Matthews, and he never asked for nor suggested any fee. Yeah. And, and I think it's because... They get paid well. Of course they do. And I've been doing this for 11 years, mm. and I reckon five blokes have asked for money. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Well. Yeah. No, I totally get it as well. I think during our podcasting days of the last five years, how many people have asked for money? Uh, two. Um, two. B- back, in it, back on our old soccer podcast. We won't yeah. name them, but they never came on the show because they asked okay. for money and we politely said, Well, uh, tell no, me how it you. should... This is my view about how it should work. Yeah. Mm. I've, um, I interviewed Dale Morris, who is almost my favourite player yeah, in the last, yeah. last yeah. ten years. And he, we were walking to... Uh, walking away from a coffee we had about... Talk about I'd tell him, telling him what I wanted to talk about. And he said, is, is there, and he was quite sheepish, but he says, is there a fee for this, Mike? And I said, no, there's not, Dale. Cab charge? <laughs> and, he, and he said, okay. And he, he didn't push it. And then I gave him the, the Matthews line, yeah. which I often use. Yeah. It was cool. Never got yeah. mentioned again. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Yeah. You love that. I mean, these, yeah. are, uh, these are Footscray boy though, so they're, they're pretty poor. The and he's time. an ex-Werby boy. There you go. Me. <laughs> that, that's fair enough. You need I, the cab I, I, I love him and I really uh, respect his career, but I said to him the other day, I said, I played more games for you with the Bs. <laughs> 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 he was there four years and played 30 games. Yeah. <laughs> right. can, I, can, can I just bring you up quickly before we go to the next coach? Yeah. One of my favourite, most iconic memories mm. – in AFL history, as a 30-year-old human on this planet that's yes. followed it since day one, is Choco Williams yeah. and, yeah. The, and, the, cho- oh, and, the, and oh. the choking. Iconic. That is, it's iconic. It almost doesn't get better than that. Yeah. yeah. But, but, and but it reminds me, and it, in a weird it's way... It's on the same level as Paul Rose's Here It Is. Yeah, or, or, but, or but Teddy for Witten. different reasons. Yeah. One was, like Choco, yeah. again, I, I like Choco and I enjoy his company and when mm. he's often in Albert Park where I live having mm. a coffee, so I'll either talk or sit and have one with me. So... I I'm, I'm okay with him in that, con- but mm. he does him. He sometimes he's his own worst enemy, and I think mm. the Alan Scott one I can understand that, but it was yeah. a bit crass. Yeah. He didn't need to do it. Yeah, you know, he won the club. He, he'd driven the club to its first premiership. Yeah. Win. I think he might have beating, been a bit more subtle, beating the unbelievable Lions team. So it was a pretty big feat. Yeah. Uh, next one for you, John Worsfold. <laughs> Well, I can't go high, any higher than two for whoosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, as a lot of Essen fans, uh, I do an Essen podcast, yeah. Mike, and we refer to John as Rahul Dravid because no one plays a straighter <laughs> bat than yeah. and him. He he's just a, a, a wall. You could just bounce yeah, things yeah. off him; it'll come. And straight I, back. I'm critical of him for that. Mm. I, I think a man with his rich footy history. How yeah. did you give him two then? Because I thought he was an automatic one. Well, just personally, okay. Well, well, look. I wouldn't fight you over that. Okay. But, um, one and a half. But one it is. Most people would say that Sheehan should reserve one for Malthouse okay. exclusively. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, Wush, Wush uh, and I have not not had a falling out. I haven't had much to do with Wush. Mm. Fair enough. Um, but I, I don't like him in front of the media. And, yeah. and I know the coaches hate the media, but mm. but there are those who sort of say, well, do this they? is a function I have to mm. perform yeah. and I'll do it. Yeah. And, and Some do it better than others. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Someone who definitely divides opinion of the current lot is Chris Scott. Score, yeah. score for Chris. Uh, you are you're asking me personally, aren't you about yeah. about them as blokes and as performers, right? Just as a media person, when yeah. it comes to the press conference okay. time, the way, what the score way are you giving? Yeah, the way they treat oh, yeah. the media more yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I I'd probably give Scotty a four. Yeah, yeah. He's entertaining, uh, and and he's what he is is, and not all his mates can say this. He's articulate. Mm. Uh, yes. I hear that you know that, that, Kevin's that he, he's a <laughs> he's oh my God. that's nothing to brag about these yeah, days. I know. Let's um, on from that. That he some people say that he's um, he's too distant from his players, but I can only judge him in the context that I see him, mm. and I think he's uh, he's articulate, mm. uh, he's engaging, mm. uh, and he's prepared to talk about almost any topic you put in front of me. Yeah. I must admit, I really do like his commentary on 360. Yeah, and always have. Good. He's yeah. very good. Always have. When they bring in the coaches, they bring uh, in Richo, they bring in 
Chris Scott, he's very, very open. I'd and see, he's happy, he's to, I'd like happy to, to put it on the I'd, agenda. Yeah, I'd like to see him a slightly more assertive on 360. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think he's a bit apologetic when he doesn't really mean to be. Mm. Fair enough. Now, I don't mind it. Good, good, good point to be talking about 360 because we do want to talk about someone who's on that show. Mark, Mr. Ro- Mark Mr. Robinson. Mr. Robinson, who's followed on taking over your top 50. Yep. You, uh, How did that feel giving it to him? Yeah, was there a cere- well, well, was there a ceremony? <laughs> did, you, did you hand something to him? Or? Well, he did. He didn't. Uh, he wasn't made the chief footy writer. Uh, I'd been gone. I think eighteen months when okay. when they gave him that role. Yep. Um, well, uh, my view about that is, it wasn't mine to to give. Or, okay. I mean, I did it. Come on. Mm. No, no, I'm being serious about it. I'm not being humble. Well, was it was it your idea or was it just no, someone the papers? No, it was Jeff Slattery's idea at the Sunday Age. Okay. Uh, he was there you go. he was the sports editor of the Sunday Age. It was 1990 or 91. Okay. I forget which one. And he said, uh, he said, I want you to write a story about the best player in the competition. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, just name you name him. You name him. Write a story about it and put forty nine behind him in order. <laughs> I said, I said, you're kidding, and it's haunted me ever since. But it's it's brilliant. It is the single most important piece of content for every footy fan. It's big. to read yeah. before the start of a season. Yeah, it gets you. Yeah. It gets you excited. Come on, Mike. yeah, no, it divides I, look, opinion. No, I, I understood its its commercial value. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, the paper loved it, mm. uh, and and this and they're still milking it. They're still making plenty out of out of Robbo's fifty. They are. They yeah. are. And I mean, for you guys and for kids in their teens, mm. not that you two are, but uh, it's it's Mark Robinson's top 50 now. Yeah. No, nah, it's still Mark Shands. It's <laughs> big. Uh, we'll, we'll go through the 10. We won't do his whole 50, but we'll go through the 10 and then I'll ask See, you. See, we finished with the coaches. Yeah, we're done with coaches. No, we're there's on. one more. Oh, oh. Okay. okay, here we go. So okay. Okay. Okay, no, this one, no. okay. Um, I'll give Bucks five and a quarter. Okay, oh. that's good. Just to, so uh, you got Mick. <laughs> got Mick. <laughs> Yeah. Bucks, yeah, I, I, I <laughs> love the Buckley persona in mm. the coaching role. He's a good guy. I, I think, um, yeah, and he doesn't belittle people, mm. yeah. um, and he's engaging and he, he's articulate uh, and he's credible and he's got time. That's and he still hasn't won a flag. No, he still hasn't. No, won he still hasn't won a flag. No. no, and that's what's disappointing. And I say that neutrally. He like, I, I don't like the Collingwood Football Club, but he deserves one. He deserves a flag. That yeah, I, I think he does. Yeah. I th- and, and we do mark them. I mean, if Ross Lyon had won a flag or Grant Thomas had won a flag, they probably and should have. Both of them could have and probably should have. Mm. Um, you know, they'd be seen in a different light. Absolutely. But, but Nick Revolt probably should have won a flag. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's it. Well, uh, there's plenty of players. There's a lot of players. You could have an endless discussion about who is the you know best p- player or coach to never win one. Yeah, Kyle yeah. Morton. Ka- Probably not Carl Morton. <laughs> How Probably did Carl Morton not win one? Jason Laycock. Yeah, no, definitely not. Yeah, right. Well, no, Jared Healy's a Melbourne bloke that uh, yeah. never won a flag. There you go. And, and, and was a very, very good player. So right. disappointing. Now, someone who has won a flag was the number one on Mark Robinson's list, Marcus Bontempelli. Yep. Do you believe he is the number one player in the comp at the moment? I was on Bontempelli before Robbo was, but there's Ooh. no question in my mind, Dustin Martin's the best player mm. and by a considerable margin. Yeah. I, I have to. I tend to agree. And I think I yeah, like yeah. the bond as well. I think yeah, so do I. It's like it's, it's a long game. Like he's yeah. he's still a lot younger than Dusty, but I think Dusty's still top dog. Yeah. I think you've got it wrong. I think it's Oscar McDonald. <laughs> do you really? Yeah. <laughs> what on the way? Just hits his targets all the time. Well, he's just always got cement in his boots. That's <laughs> that's an incredible trait for a player. Like he he he's the first player. To officially contract c- cement boots. Cement boots. <laughs> it's a, it's, oh, there's a lot of people who have had cement boots. Yeah. 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 The, um, the, the, with Robbo's 50, mm. uh, I had uh, coincidentally had the same top five. Really? Yeah. Same order? Or no, diff- no, no, or because, order? no. Because I'm, an, I'm a huge Bonham Pally fan yeah. and I did – I had this crush on him okay. for yeah. at least three years. Yeah. Uh, but I, I rarely – like when Carey was at his best, mm. there was a gap between him and the field. Okay, I think there's a gap. I think Martin is clearly the best player in the comp. All uh, right, give give me your five now in yep, your order. In order. F- five 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 to one. So right start on. with number five. Okay. Uh, well, I better go the other way because I'll remember them easier that way. Okay. Number one, Martin, Dustin Martin. Yeah. Number two, uh, Dangerfield. Yep. Fife. Yep. Bond and Pelly. Yep. Cripps. Oh. Yeah. I would alter mine. Yeah. Like this is the thing. Like, there's a few of those guys that like 
two, three, four, and five, you could put them in any order, yeah, yeah. and there's a reason why. Yeah. They've all got good reasons why they deserve to be there. But is there anyone that you would take out of the six to ten and alternate and throw in your top? Who, who is six to ten? Well, six to ten is Brody Grundy, Max Gorn, Tom Lynch, uh, Lockie Whitfield, and Lockie Neal. I think. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm happy. I yeah. think the top. I think the first five. Mm. Uh, significantly better than the second five. Yeah, I tend I tend to agree. As time goes on, a couple of the older ones might like they they will slide. But but this Granny and Dawn are amazing. But I don't think they're better than those five blokes. This is only for this year. Yeah, yeah. So the next time going change. on is yeah. not really relevant. Mm, this is just right now what we think will happen in the next six months. Yeah, if in fact they get out there. I, yes. I agree with both of you. I think Dustin Martin's number one. I I'm a huge Patrick Cripps fan, but personally, I think he'll go to another level. I'd almost have him in at two or three. So I'm a little bit different on Cripps versus Bontempelli versus Fife. Fife as well is an interesting one because it's that old theory that if Nat Fife played for a Victorian powerhouse, yep, yep. we'd probably always nearly have him won yeah. with a Dustin Martin, for example. Mm. I do think there's a little not, – not daylight, but I think there is a bit of separation between Bontempelli, Cripps and Dangerfield. That's why I find it – I don't find it weird that he's put Dustin Martin in it too. Mm. It's completely fine. And Bontempelli, his pre-season form was unbelievable. But mm. for me, I, I can't see how you go past Dustin Martin when even if he's having – We'll call it a down day by his standards. Mm. You swing him forward. Yeah, yeah. the guy yeah. kicks. The guy yeah. can kick three <laughs> goals in, in in six minutes. So yes. all of a sudden the game's completely altered. Yeah. There aren't many players that can swing the way no. he does with the impact He's he does. This is too early for you, blokes. But he is the modern day lethal. Yeah, yeah. lethal was a sort of a rover became a forward, kicked nine hundred goals. Yeah, but um, and and like lethal, he's not great over his head, Dusty. But he's mm. so good with his body. Yeah, he doesn't. That need he to takes the aerial contest out of it. Yeah, he just. Muscles them until it falls into his arms. Yeah, no, I like it. That was good analysis. He's crazy good. Um, you've certainly covered some big stories in your time. Is there one story <laughs> that you think was just the most impactful, the biggest story that you you followed? I oh, mean, why are you doing this? I mean, we could talk. We could talk merger. We could talk saga. We can no, talk. You know, my, no, cousins, I've always, there's always heaps, there's heaps of There's always been a, a demarcation with me. It's got a. The biggest stories happen to be those that I'm, a, I'm an on the field person. Okay. Okay. You know? I used to say this to Caroline Wilson all the time. Well, you look after the boardrooms and I'll look after the stuff inside the fence. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the be- the biggest story, I mean, it's a long time ago. Maybe I have a coloured view about it, but it was um, early 80s. Now, picture this. Two then VFL clubs, called two AFL clubs now. Yeah. Um, the captains of the two of them, right? Different clubs, mm-hmm. captains, both Brownlow medalists. Mm-hmm. And I read a story that said uh, they were for sale for a million bucks in 81, mm-hmm. and it happened. Peter Moore and Calvin Templeton. Yes. So the story from, I mean, I, I was sitting on that, not sitting on, I was sort of doing bits and pieces on this story for probably three weeks before I had the balls to put it in the paper. Because it just seemed so improbable. Yeah. How can you have two Brownlow medalists and two captains? Uh, being packaged up, and then getting to where, getting to another club, and when they went, when they went to Melbourne, gnarly. I think Rob's just sitting here going, "What was that? What happened?" Yeah. <laughs> what they, no, no, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm following Are you with now. him? I'm following now. Yeah, Do you remember yeah. this story? I, I know of it. When you said they went to Melbourne, I was like, "Okay, now I know what you're talking." Okay, about. Okay, we'll talk about. <laughs> so I reckon you don't know. So Pendlebury <laughs> and Bonham Pally. Yeah. Uh, suddenly the million would now be 10 million but they come to you us imagine those two oh. Pendleby and Bonham Pelly for sale awesome. Awesome. for 10 million bucks and yeah. getting to a, a, the same club yeah. for the next season well I, th- I hear North's got a bit of money in their cap so maybe they'll head <laughs> over to North Melbourne I still don't reckon you get it <laughs> yeah I, I, I don't I, reckon I, North have got any of that money I reckon they just every year they float that, that we've got all this money <laughs> yeah, for yeah no, no, guys we've got it guys, why don't we it. flip it on its head what about I get mo- it now yeah. what about modern day story as well yeah just for the just for the kids well, just for the youngsters I haven't been in the papers for I know that nine years oh, 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 just before two th- two turn of the century between turn of the century 2000 <laughs> onwards um, I can't remember yeah okay and some of the stuff that I was proudest of was opinion pieces yeah yes you know like I think hopefully brave yeah hopefully imaginative and um, and thought provoking how annoying yeah. was it to continuously write about grass at Colonial and the surface did you ever were uh, you were you tasked that annoying no, I would tedious have, task I would have cooked place a few times <laughs> yeah. and rightly so isn't yeah. it incredible how many times they've stuffed that up right? i mean now you talked about ross oakley before yeah. mm. now this is true right 
when that plan came out, was was Ross still at the AFL then? Ross left in '96. So they might have been planning it. Yeah, yeah, they would have been planning for sure. So they would okay. have started building in '98. So this is this is a true story. Here we go. Um, grass stadium, roof, mm. modern amenities, mm. perfect uh, capacity about fifty. Fill it up every week. It seemed good at I the said, time. I said, Ross, how are they going to grow grass grass under a roof? <laughs> he says, Oh, you're an idiot, Mick. By then they'll know how to do it. <laughs> 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 and they still haven't figured it out. Yeah, that's true. And they built the stadium in the wrong direction. By, by then they'll know how to do oh. it. Oh, yeah. It's uh. nothing. I've been to many uh, <laughs> med- many Saturday afternoon games at that stadium and there is nothing worse than getting the sun directly yeah. in your eye because they built it in the wrong yes, direction. Yes, there is something worse. There's something yeah. worse. <laughs> Sitting at home and trying to watch it on telly. Yeah. It is bad watching it on telly. Oh. Oh. i tell you what, though. That is the one saving grace as a Melbourne supporter that our home ground is the Melbourne Cricket Yeah. That's the that's one of the few saving graces, Mike. Mm. Even if we only get about 20,000 people. That's fine. We, yeah. we don't have to turn up to the concrete jungle. Yeah. Mm. It's horrible around there with the NAB buildings now and everything else. Yeah. That's, we won't know. get a NAB sponsorship, but that's cool. Yeah. We yeah. don't want it, NAB. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> you, you ruined Colonial. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else have we got? We've got Grand Final. We've got to go to Grand Final quickly and we'll yeah. wrap up with a couple. But yeah. And I've got one more after that. Okay. But Grand Final... We all love Grand Final Day. Hopefully there'll be a Grand Final in 2020. We don't know. The world is on edge at the moment. Mm. But we're going to take a trip down memory lane. We're going to talk about some of your favourite Grand Finals. Now, I think you made mention of it before, but 1989, and my old man always brings this one up, and it's my birth year. I'm just going to go for the jugular here. Is 1989 the greatest Grand Final? Uh, It's not the one I enjoyed most, no. Oh, okay. Because... the, the the best day of sport yep. that I've seen or been involved in, mm-hmm. as in being there, mm-hmm. was uh, when the Bulldogs won the flag. Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, that, it was w- and it was a great game. Nice. Uh, and it was just such an emotional roller coaster. And I remember Gillam McLaughlin went past me, uh, probably to go on the ground, I suspect, mm-hmm. but just at the finish. He said, Yeah, he said, uh, what did you think? I said, that's the best day <laughs> sport I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, I, I loved it. I was sitting amazing. next to Matt Finnis, mm. who actually was a bulldog boy when he was a kid, mm. yeah. uh, and told me the story about his first date with his wife, Dianne, was, uh, who had no interest in football. He said, uh, we're going to the, West, the Western Oval, right? She said, oh, okay. All right. So they get there. She says, where, where do we sit? Where are our seats? Anywhere you like. But yeah. this, that was his first date with them. I, I just never understood wow. why she married him after that. Yeah, wow. But but I love that day. I love where the Bulldogs had come from. It's special. I'm a Western Suburbs boy, so there was an affinity with uh, with this footy when team. When Liam Picking kicks the goal in the last quarter. Oh, yeah. Special. And I think... And, Tom Boyd. and the Tommy oh. Boyd one. And I, when that I, is huge. I've interviewed Dale Morris for Open Mic. Yeah. I think yes. I told you that. And he, I talked about that tackle yeah. when he... Gets Buddy. And the ball spills free. Oh, yeah. And Tommy gets it and kicks it. And he said, he and Buddy are on the ground. And he's, and he's just looking up at the ball bouncing. Bounces just outside the goal post. Bounces in and through the goals. He, looked, he said, someone's, someone's rooting for us up there. Yeah. It was a good day. One of my closest friends is a diehard Bulldog supporter. And I watched that game with him and a few other lads. And yeah. That was Something all that special. emotion we talked about. But that was yeah. it. Yeah. That, that's the modern day and, example. And, and of that. I think, as well, like it I hurt mean, me that day. Yeah, what's the thing? I think as Melbourne fans, you can understand this. And when you haven't, <laughs> when you haven't, when you haven't won anything in a while, like, yeah. When you haven't won anything in a while, seeing a team break their drought, oh, when you're yeah. a team, it's also drought. It you you feel something as well. If you're a Hawthorns poor and you watch that game, you're like, oh, it's another grand final. Yeah. But if you've been suffering for a while. You, you do feel that emotion. I think all the clubs who had been in a bit of a drought or a bad period Swans, felt Swans, Doggies and Richmond. Yeah. When they, yeah. And that, that's, what, that's why this game is so good. I mean, mm. all games, because they produce um, results that we yeah. don't expect. But yeah. um, that was sort of, like the Swans, there was mm. probably two and a half hours of just gripping theatre. Yeah. Can I explain that though? Because I was actually at the Sydney West Coast Grand Final in 05. It's yeah. the only Grand Final I've attended live because my uncle, who was on Sydney's list for a year, did What's his... What's his name? Steve Smith. There's a lot of Steve oh, Smiths out name. there, so yeah. don't yeah. worry about yeah. it. He went on and kept in Australia, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. He did. Um, <laughs> and then be president of the MCC. He's, yeah. he's done everything. <laughs> yeah. He's a jack of all trades, Steve. Don't yeah. worry about him. But I was there, and I was swept up in the emotion, and I was I was rooting for, for Sydney, of mm. course, because half of my family supports Sydney, the other half support Melbourne. Anyway... 
I'm there with my brother up in the nosebleeds and it, when the full-time siren went and Leo Barry took that incredible mark, I felt a bit gutted and I felt a bit emotional because it wasn't Melbourne. Mm. Now, you fast, forward, you fast forward to the Bulldogs. Mm. I was going berserk during that game going for the Doggies. I was, I was a fully-fledged Doggies fan for that, for that day. I was l- absolutely loving it. But the, I had the same feeling. At the end, I was like, oh, shit, the Doggies have gone and done it. Now mm. we've got the longest premiership drought. Yep. And then when Richmond went and did it after having such an abysmal 2016, getting smacked by Sydney in that last round by over 100 points, never looking like a, even a finals team, and then they come out the next year and they win mm. it. Again, I was I was excited for Richmond against Adelaide in 2017, but I had the same feeling. Yeah. Once it all set in, I was like, oh, it's not my club. And yeah, I just watch no. it and I, I go, that, I, know I really want that to well, be my football do. club. And, and I mean, I, I, I would think now the dream result uh, would be Melbourne to play St Kilda in a grand final. Um, <laughs> Draw. What, d- during a compromise season? <laughs> yeah, during a compromise season. <laughs> Everyone's like, you won, the, games each. you won the asterisk flag. <laughs> yeah. No, because I'm big on... The sh- not not sharing it because mm. it's then it's not the competition we want it to be, but mm. the people do get a taste of it. I just mm. I, it's the one thing, and and this is the other thing. Rob knows this, and I probably shouldn't talk about other codes, but it's relevant at the moment. Yes, I'm a huge Liverpool fan. Mm. Liverpool haven't won the league for thirty years, and now they can't watch. And, their and they might not. Play. And now um. they might not watch it because of coronavirus, and it's going to get mm. taken away from me. I'm cursed. Yeah. Yeah, you are. It is hard. Oh, but like, even Essen will win one one day. <laughs> I don't know. Will they? <laughs> you said you said you hadn't seen him for the next, last twenty years. Next year. Yeah. I got one last one before you go. Now we've talked we've spoken about your vocabulary, your word prowess oh, today. Go. I'm gonna read you five player names and I just want you to describe them in one word. Okay. Lee Matthews. <laughs> Come on. Uh, um one word. <laughs> no, well, I've got to be careful about how, yeah, yeah, which yeah. word I choose. Yeah. Um, well, just don't say anything derogatory. <laughs> no, I won't say anything. No. Unique. Unique. Ooh. Uh, Fraser Gehrig. <laughs> Mysterious. Warwick Kappa. Lunatic. Alistair Clarkson. So, sorry, Warwick. <laughs> Alistair Clarkson. As a coach or player? Uh, coach. Uh, intriguing. Jason Ackermanis. <laughs> How many times can intriguing go around? <laughs> um, no, no. Um, effervescent. Effervescent. I love that. Oh, I love that. Can I, can I put, do one last one? Go. Rob Crawford. Mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> You've known him for an hour. There we go. There we go. You've well, known him for an hour. Beautiful. Thank How you, was Mike. that? Thank It'll you, Mike. Mike, pleasure, boys. We'll give you a pardon now. You can leave. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.